Good afternoon, good afternoon. TGIF, thank God it's Friday. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As usual, I'm glad to greet you in the matchless and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Allow me just to um, share some things with you very, very quickly. Um, let me greet some of you first, so please come on. It's noontime and it's Friday. We thank God for taking us through another week. Good to see you, Margaret Moses, Deborah Ward, how are you? Mike Joseph, how are you? How is everybody doing on this cold, cold Friday morning? But hey, let's thank God for taking us through another week. All right, um, a few um, announcements that I want to give. As you know, we were very saddened to learn of the transitioning and the passing of our brother and friend, um, Wayne Petnard. So those services are gonna be this evening this evening at the church, viewing from five to seven. Service will start promptly at seven. Um, we, of course, are still in the midst of a pandemic, so we have to follow all of the regulations of the CDC. So we can only have a limited amount of persons. So if you've been invited by the family, um, you're a member of the church, and you have a relationship, then certainly we will do all that we can to make space for you. We want this to happen in dignity and with respect as we celebrate this wonderful gift that God gave to the church. Um, if you're viewing and you're not staying, then we ask that you view respectfully and um, leave appropriately. I know that we're gonna do really, really well to make this happen so that all things are done in decency and in order. On Sunday, of course, we look forward to seeing you for the Lord's Day. I look forward to sharing with you in worship, but we just praise God for his goodness and for his grace and for his mercy. Finally, I want you to put this date down. Wednesday, Wednesday, February 17th is Ash Wednesday. We will have an in-person service at the church. We will have in imposition of ashes, Ash Wednesday is the day that begins Lent. It also reminds us that from ashes we came, to ashes we will return. And I write in my meditation as amazing that God breathed into this dust and we became living souls. And so we want to end this 40 day period being closer to Christ. And hopefully we will come on Sunday morning with the victory with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to declaring that Christ the Lord is risen, he is risen indeed. Okay, let's go to our word today. Um, again, good to see all of you. Uh, I want to, um, don't really have a tag. I, I guess if I did have a tag that I wanted to put on this, it would simply be sometimes what we need to do is point people to Jesus. So let me abbreviate that and say, let's just point people to Jesus. I'm reading today out of Acts, the Gospel of Acts, chapter 3. And I'm going to share with you um, verses 1 through 10. And then I'll just share a few words that God has laid on my heart to share with you. Okay, Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, I'm reading out the New International Version of the Bible. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. At three in the afternoon, now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, helped him up. Instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, 
walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. And so what I want to share with you is that sometimes it's just important to point people to Jesus. And it's important for us to also make every effort to spend time and to get to Jesus because he is the answer for whatever problems and issues that we're facing. The Bible says in this um, pericope of scripture that they went to prayer um, at the time of day, at appropriate time of day. So you need to know that during this time, they actually went for prayer at least four times a day. Um, 9 a.m. in the morning, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and 6 p.m. at night. That was the time that was scheduled for prayer. I think that we also need to make sure that we schedule in our day time that we will spend with the Lord in prayer. And so on this day, they are going into the temple. There is this man. He has been begging for money. He's been lame, crippled from birth. So he's never walked before. And his occupation is simply to beg for money as people go in and out of the temple is what he was doing. And on this particular day, Peter and John, they are going into the temple and the man is looking to them to give him some money. But Peter looks at him and says, silver and gold, I don't have. The man takes his eyes off of his situation and the text says, and he fastens it on Peter as he did John. So now he's not concentrating on his situation anymore, but he's paying attention to what these gentlemen are saying. They have a different message, something that he's not heard before. They say silver and gold, we don't have. But what we do have, we will give to you. And then they declare, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. This was amazing. This man who had never walked before. How does he get it together? The Bible says that strength came into his ankles and his legs. And he got up and he was able to walk. They took him by the hand and they took him into the temple. I want to suggest that sometimes it's wonderful to try to extend tangible um, gifts to people who are in need, but perhaps sometimes it's also a good thing to spend some time to talk to them about Jesus, to find out what they really need. Sometimes it's not just a material thing, but sometimes people need to have a relationship with God. They need to know that you care. And in this text, the Bible is very, very clear that this man now has a connection with Peter and John as his eyes fasten on them and their eyes fasten on him. Might it be that we walk by too quickly, that we really don't pay attention, that we're not as compassionate and as concerned as we really need to be? And then what I saw as I was contemplating and meditating on this text today, what they gave this man was what he really needed. Because now that he could walk, he wouldn't have to beg for money every day. He'd be able to get a job. He'd be able to make his own money. Somebody said that um, you give someone a fish, they can eat for a day. You teach them how to fish, then they could make it for a lifetime. And then finally, as I come to close, when God blesses you, when God opens up that door, when God blesses somebody else, then we need to give God praise, honor, and glory. The Bible says that this man, when he realized that he could walk, he realized what God had done, that he was running and jumping and praising God. Let me tell you something. We have lost over 460,000 lives in this pandemic. If we are alive today, if we have a reasonable portion of our health and strength, if you're able to hear and listen to me today, then we need to give God some praise. It means that God has been good, that he's kept us, in spite of us, if you've been sick and God has lifted you up, then we owe God some praise. 
And I think that when we learn to be as this man was, really excited about what God has done, it opens up the doors for God to do even more. Well, let me come to close. If you're taking notes, I want to say simply three things. One, let's continue to pray. Two, take your eyes off of your situation and your problems. And then thirdly, look to Jesus who has the answer. And when he blesses you, as I know he will, and he already has, if you're listening to me right now, then give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. Because we know that the grass withered and the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks. And for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power, that it gives birth as we yet try to understand it, we say thank you. Now, oh God, I pray to bless each person that's under the sound of my voice. You know the needs and the concern that we have. You also understand the heaviness of our hearts as we have lost one of our loved ones. But we hear Jesus declare, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We pray for the family of Brother Wayne Patnard. We pray for our own church family, that we will even purpose in our own lives as a result of every experience. Let our light so shine that people might see our good works and you might get the glory. Bless those that are sick, those that are in hospital, those that send to the church and say, pray for me. Comfort those that have lost loved ones. And then, oh God, help us to hear the words of the psalmist. Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Thank you for this time of prayer and devotion. Hear our prayer and I incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Good to see all of you. Good to see Sister Shirley Ballard, Sister Mary Harnett, Angela Kelly, all of you. So good to see you. Um, some of you didn't hear my announcement earlier because you weren't on just yet because I did start early because I have so much to do today, as I know you do. Um, but I did want to remind you, um, again, of the services tonight. You're on from 5 to 7 for, for Brother Wayne Patnard. Service will start promptly at 7 o'clock. And so we ask that you would... Um, Understand that we are in a pandemic so that we will follow all of the rules of the CDC and we'll be as careful as we possibly can. So that's one. Two, I want to remind you that on this Wednesday, this Wednesday coming is Ash Wednesday. It's the beginning of Lent, but we will take the 40-day journey with our Lord to Calvary and then be in prayer and prayerfully emerge with Jesus on Sunday morning with power and victory, declaring that Christ the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. And certainly I look to see you on Sunday for our worship experience as we look forward to giving God all the praise, all the honor, and all of the glory because he inhabits the praises of his people. All right, God bless you really, really good. And have a wonderful weekend, okay? Of course, tomorrow is our Sabbath, and then we'll look to see you on Sunday. Let's receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance Grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and you're going out. You're down sitting and you're uprising. Till we shall stand in his presence. Through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much. Good to see all of you. Natalie, good to see you. Lillian Smiley, good to see you. Beverly, um, happy birthday to your mom. Please tell us that hello. Um, wonderful member of our church, Sister Ruby Ramsey, always good to see you. Good to see all of you. Annie, um, Lee, thank you for joining. Good to see you. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend.